Welcome back to Unity Basics. Today we're going to go over setting up a character controller to start walking around in a world in Unity. Um, Unity actually comes with some basic character controllers and uh, camera scripts to work with. So I'm going to show you how to get one of those up and running um, so you can have a simple character to start setting up a, a game with. So uh, in order to get this, if you didn't install the packages with it when you created your project, uh, you would go up to assets and then import package and then character controller. So we're going to click on that and it's going to load up and here's everything that's in that package. Um, let's go ahead and hit import and it's going to import the scripts into the project um, and then create a standard assets folder. The standard assets folder is kind of, uh, as it says, the standard assets folder for all Unity assets that you get from the store. Uh, and if you go into here, it says character controllers, and then under that, we've got third person and first person. The third person controller is actually uh, missing a lot of things and isn't really properly set up. So I'm going to ignore that one for now and go with a, a first person. Um, technically, the first person controller can be used as a third person. Uh, you would just have to make modifications to the camera and the uh, control scripts. But we're not worried about making modifications, we're worried about getting this up and running now, immediately. So, uh, I'm going to take this first person controller and drag them into the scene. And there we are, here it is. Uh, the character has a camera, so I don't need this other camera. I want to see what the player sees. So I'm going to get rid of my original camera that I had in here before. And now we have the controller with his graphics or just the capsule and the camera, and the camera is still blue because that's all they see. Uh, and if I hit play, the character just starts falling, and that's because it's applying gravity. So we can't just have him fall, we want him to stop so we can you know, walk around with him. So I'm gonna go ahead and go, uh, let's go game object, create other, and we'll add a, let's do a cube. And the, with this cube, I'm gonna try to create a floor. I'm gonna move it to, zero 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 and then scale it out and kind of squish it down and uh, that's where he's at if I move it right below him then we can kind of fall onto it um, but let's make it bigger than that so this is right now six point something something let's go on the x-axis let's go uh, 20 and 20 on the Z, and on the Y, let's go 0.5, there we are. So that's our platform. Now if I hit play, the character should fall onto it, and in here in this view, you can see I can kind of look around, and I can walk, and in the top view, you see the character's moving. I'm walking based on hitting the W, A, S, and D keys. Uh, there's also a jump, so I can jump. Um, but it's really hard to see me jumping because I don't really have shadows or anything. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, so I'm going to stop playing and I'm going to add, let's go game object, create other, and directional light. So the directional light is essentially the sun and now I can see uh, shading on the surface and everything. Uh, however, if you notice, the character is not casting a shadow. This is because the capsule is used as a placeholder for a character, hence why it's called graphics. Uh, graphics can be any model that it could have it could have been a character a cube um, a dinosaur whatever uh, it is essentially just a a default model that they put in here just to show you that that's about the height of the character and whatnot um, the controller is all controlled from this top uh, parent object called first person controller or let's call it player and so the player and this the graphics would be uh, player model and then we have the, the main camera or player camera. And that's uh, kind of how that hierarchy is set up for this. So we can even, uh, on here, they have things like tagging stuff. If I tag this as a player, now whenever this player object walks into something, I can actually call it based on that. Um, so there's that on there. Uh, now let's do, hmm, I'm gonna go over kind of how this is put together real quick. So, uh, oh, first of all, if you go to the player model, like I said, it wasn't casting a shadow. 
uh, for the directional light, I want it to cast a shadow. So uh, under light on the directional light, um, on that game object, this is the light component. If you go down to shadow type, turn that on to any of them that it gives you options for. I'm not sure if the free one allows you to turn on any sort of shadows. If it does, great. I'm going to turn on soft shadows. He's still not making a shadow. I need to go to the player model and now change that to cast shadows. Uh, I could also do receive shadows if this was my character, um, but I'm not worried about that. I just want him to cast it. So there's the shadow. Now if I hit play, he should fall and you should see the shadow follow him. And if I walk towards the edge over here, you'll see the shadow kind of cut off. Um, if you can run this way and look down, there's my shadow and the shadow can cut off the side of it. So that's all working now. We have a really basic first person character walking around. Um, but with that, we want to have something that's a little more fun to uh, interact with. So I'm going to create a couple blocks for us to platform on and uh, and then we're going to jump through it. So let's go create other cube and let's gonna, I'm going to set this to 5, 5, 5 and that's going to be a, a platform block. Move it down a little bit. So there's going to be that one. Let's put it in front of our, our, our player so we can see it. Uh, every time I move something, I'm holding control, so it snaps to the grid, just in case you wanted to know. So that's in front of us now, and then I'm going to duplicate it. Right, uh, right clicking on the thing in the hierarchy, hit duplicate, and then move it over. Then I'm going to move it up some, create some steps, and I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to move it a little further, so we have to run and jump. Uh, maybe like that, and then I'm going to do a sideways one that's a little higher, sideways and higher, like that. So that's going to be my uh, real simple platforming game, uh, and when I hit play, I'm going to have it maximize on play, so I can actually see the game full screen, so if I hit play, there we are, player, there's some blocks, and if I walk up to this, I can collide with it. There's my shadow. And I'm going to jump up and then run over and jump up. And this is a little further. I can fall here and jump here. I can't reach it though, it's too high. So I'm going to jump over here and then actually run and jump. And then jump up here. And now I'm above where I started. There's that down there. I can jump back down. And now I'm down. And there's a real simple. Uh, platform setup, but it's really hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and give them some colors. Uh, each cube or each uh, uh, each cube in this scene has a, a uh, mesh renderer. The mesh renderer is actually taking in a material, so um, the default diffuse is always going to be um, every new object that you add, so we need to make a new one just so we can tint some stuff and we can see them. Um, I created a uh, test folder in an uh, earlier video. I'm going to rename it by clicking on it once and call this uh, Unity Test Assets. I'm going to delete this folder too because I don't need it. But under this folder, let's go create and material. And this is going to be platform uh, mat. I'll give it a naming scheme so the materials will be mats. Platform mat is a diffuse with a color of, let's go like a green color. And now, if I go to these cubes, I can uh, one by one change them like this by dragging this material over to the mesh renderer and then replacing it. Or I can mass select them, uh, grab all these ones that I want to change, and then drag this over to default and replace them. So now if I hit play and look at these, they kind of stand out from the ground and I can see them better and jump up and now I can see the, the space between here and uh, there you have it. There's a simple first person character walking around in a scene.